What do you think about the will to power? Do you think human, what do you think drives humans? Is it, is it? Um, oh, an, an unholy mix of things. I, I, I don't think there's one pure, simple, and elegant objective function dri driving humans by, 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 by any means. What do you think, um, if we look at, I know it's hard to look at humans in an aggregate, but do you think overall humans are good? Or uh, do we have both good and evil within us that uh, depending on the circumstances, depending on the whatever well, can can, can so uh, percolate to the top? Good and evil are very ambiguous, complicated, and in some ways silly yeah. concepts. But if we, we could dig into your question from a couple directions. So I think if you look in evolution, humanity is shaped both by individual selection and what biologists would call group selection, like tribe level selection, right? So individual selection has driven us in a selfish DNA sort of way so, so that each of us does to a certain approximation what will help us propagate our, our DNA to to future generations. I mean that 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 that's why I've got to have four kids so far, and the, and the, probably that's not the last one. Yeah. <laughs> On the other hand, I like the ambition. <laughs> tribal, like group selection, means humans in a way will do what what will advocate for the persistence of the DNA of their whole their whole tribe or, or, or their their social group. And in biology, you you have both of these, right? Like a, and you can see, say, an ant colony or a beehive. There's a lot of group selection in, in, in the evolution of those social animals. On the other hand, say a, a big cat or some very solitary animal, it's a lot more biased toward, toward individual selection. Humans are, are an interesting balance. And I think this reflects itself in what we would view as selfishness versus altruism to, 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 to some extent. So we just have both of those objective functions contributing to the, the makeup of, of our brains. And then as Nietzsche analyzed in his own way and others have analyzed in different ways, I mean, we abstract this as, well, we have both good, good and, and, and evil within us, right? Because a lot of what we view as evil is really just selfishness. And a lot of what we view as good is altruism, which means doing, doing what's good for the, for, for the tribe. And on that level, we have both of those just baked in, baked into us, and th that's that's how it is. Of course, there are psychopaths and sociopaths, and people who, you know, get gratified by the suffering of others, and th that's that 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 that's that's a different thing. Yeah, those are exceptions. But, but I, I, on the yeah, whole, but I I think at, at core, we're not purely selfish. We're not purely altruistic. We we are a mix, and that's that's the nature of it, and. We also have a complex constellation of values that are just very specific to our, our evolu evolutionary history. Like we, you know, we we love waterways and, and, and mountains, and the the ideal place to put a house is on a mountain overlooking the water, right? And <laughs> you know, we, we 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 care a lot about our our kids, and we care a little less about our cousins, and even less about our yeah. fifth cousins. I mean, there are many particularities to. Yeah. Human values, which whether they're good or evil, depends on your on on on, on your perspective. Really, yeah. say I, I I spent a lot of time in Ethiopia in Addis Ababa, where we have one of our AI development offices for my Singularity Net project. And when I walk through the streets in Addis, you know, there's so there's people lying by the side of the road, like just living there by the side of the road, dying probably of curable diseases without enough food or medicine. And when I walk by them, you know, I feel terrible. I give them money. When I come back home to the developed world, they're not on my mind that much. I, I do donate some, but I mean, I, I also spend some of the limited money I have enjoying myself in frivolous ways rather than donating it to those people who are right now, like starving, dying, and, and yeah. suffering on, on the roadside. So does that make me evil? I mean, it makes me somewhat selfish and somewhat altruistic. And we each we each balance that in, in in our own way, right? So that's that that whether that will be true of all possible AGIs is a is a is a is a subtler question. So you you have a, that's how humans are. So you have a sense. You kind of mentioned that there's a selfish. I'm I'm not going to bring up the whole Ayn Rand 
idea of uh, selfishness being the core virtue. That's a whole interesting kind of tangent that I think we'll just <laughs> well, distract I, ourselves I, I, on. I, I, I have to make one amusing comment. Sure. Or <laughs> comment that has amused me anyway. Yeah. So the, the yeah, I, I, I have extraordinary negative respect for, for Ayn Rand. Negative, what, <laughs> what's the negative respect? <laughs> but when I worked with a company called Genescent, uh -huh. which was evolving flies to have extraordinary long lives in 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 Southern California, so we we had flies that were evolved by artificial selection to have five times the lifespan of normal wow. fruit flies. But the population of super long lived flies was physically sitting in a spare room at an Ayn Rand Elementary School in Southern <laughs> California. So that was just like, well, if, if I saw this in a movie, I, I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> well, yeah, the universe has a sense of humor in that kind of way. That fits in, the, humor fits in somehow into this whole absurd existence. But you, you mentioned the, the balance between selfishness and altruism as kind of being innate. Do you think it's possible that's kind of an emergent Phenomena, phenomena, those peculiarities of our value system, how much of it is innate? How much of it is something we collectively, kind of like a Dostoevsky novel, bring to life together as a civilization? I mean, the, the answer to nature versus nurture is usually both. And it, right. of course, it's well, nature versus nurture versus self-organization, as, right. as you mentioned. So clearly, there are evolutionary roots to individual and group selection leading to a mix of selfishness and altruism. On the other hand, different cultures manifest that in, 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 in different ways. Well, we, we all have basically the same biology. And if you look, if you, if you look at sort of pre-civilized cultures, you have tribes like the Yanomamo in Venezuela, which, which their, their culture is focused on, on killing, killing other tribes. And you, you have other Stone Age tribes that are, are mostly peaceable and have big taboos against violence. So you, you can certainly have a big difference in, in how culture manifests these innate biological characteristics, but still, you know, there's probably limits that are given by our, our biology. I, I used to argue this with my great grandparents who were Marxists actually, because they, they believed in the withering away of the state. Like that, they, they, they believe that you know, as you move from capitalism to socialism to communism, people would just become more social-minded so that a state would be unnecessary and people would just give, give, everyone would give everyone else what, what they needed. Now, setting aside that that's not what the various Marxist experiments on the planet seem to be heading toward in, in, in practice, just a, as a theoretical point, I was very dubious that, that human nature could go there. Like at, at that time when my great grandparents are alive, I was just like, you know, I, I'm a cynical teenager. I, I think humans are humans are just jerks. The state is not going to wither away. If you don't have some structure keeping people from screwing each other over, they're going to do it. And so now I, I actually don't quite see things that way. I mean, I think the my feeling now subjectively is the culture aspect is more significant than I thought it was when I, when I was a teenager. And I think you could have a human society that was dialed dramatically further toward, you know, self-awareness, other awareness, compassion, and sharing than our current society. And of course, greater material abundance helps, but to some extent, material abundance is a subjective perception also, because many Stone Age cultures right. perceive themselves as living in great material abundance, that they had all the food and water they wanted, they lived in a beautiful place, that they, they had sex lives, that they, they, they had children. I mean, they, 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 they had abundance without any factories, right? So I, I think humanity probably would be capable of fundamentally more positive and, and joy-filled mode of, of social existence than, than what we have now. Clearly, Marx didn't quite have the right idea about, about how, to, how to get there. I mean, he missed, he missed a number of, of key aspects of, uh, of human society and, and its evolution. And if we look at where we are in society now, how to get there is, is a, quite, a quite different question because there are very powerful forces pushing people in, in different directions than a positive, joyous, comp compassionate e existence, right?